Good afternoon, everyone. It's, yeah, it's an interesting time to present, um, especially when I stand between you and your lunch. So I promise to make it easy and, and, and fast. Um, my name is Josephine. I work for IntraHealth International, and I'm based in the Kenya office. I support a project called Funzo Kenya that is funded by USAID. And Funzo is really a Swahili word that means learning. Uh, the issue of health worker shortage has been a, a, a global issue and a lot more in the developing world. And following up on some of the presentations we had yesterday about Ebola, I think we all agree that the issue of health workers and the shortage is very critical and needs to be addressed. For most of us who have been in the development world and trying to come up with solutions, we have various ways we have tried to bridge this gap and see how health services can be improved. For example, uh, people have talked about task shifting, just seeing how do we expand the scope of the nurse to be able to do a little bit more in the absence of a doctor, the initiatives on community uh, health workers, trying to bridge that gap between the health worker and the community. But as a project, we felt that there's still something else that we need to look at. At the moment, a lot of us are working with the work health workers in the pipeline, those who are already employed. But how do we bring health workers into the system? How do we recruit more people into the system? The other component is that if you look at, for example, Africa, about 200 million of the population is actually youth. So again, just creating that linkage between the, the bringing new health workers into the system and actually the big and the fertile ground of having the youth around. As a project, we decided to come up with a fund that would support youth who are interested in taking training in health. And this fund is called the Afia Elimu Fund. Again, Afia is a Swahili word that means health, and Elimu means education. So it's very specific for health workers. And also focuses on the middle level, what we call middle level from uh, where I come from, the nurses, uh, the clinical officers, the lab people who take a short time to train between two and a half years to three years, and they are able to move into the health workforce quickly. So we started off with a scholarship program, and we were able to recruit a number of young people who did not have hope of having post-secondary education, and they were able to access the training. But within a short time, we actually realized the demand was higher. More and more young people were coming and just true to what we thought about the big group of young people out there and wanted the scholarships. And for again, for us who've been in development world, we know that the projects we work in are time bound. It's four years, it's five years. And we thought maybe the scholarship might not be a very sustainable approach because once the project is gone, the money with the scholarship is gone. So what happens with this youth? We've already kind of primed and, and are excited and are waiting to be supported. So we decided to move this a little further to a loan fund. And again, the next challenge, it's a loan fund. We're an NGO. It's time bound. How do you recover the money? And so then we looked at a local solution. And in Kenya, we have a, 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 an institution called the Higher Education Loans Board, and it's mandated by the government to provide loans to students and to recover the loans. Now, the difference is that the Higher Education Loans Board focused on the degree level. And so we were coming in with a new product of focusing on middle level, which we call diploma level. And they were excited to, kind of, to, to, to venture into that uh, middle level area, and again, uh, in health sector, we have the employment levels are a little higher than training in other areas. So they came in, and they came in as the fund managers, and we started off with the loans. In, through the program, at the moment, we have 341 beneficiaries on the scholarship program. 
we have 3,500 students at the moment who are benefiting from the loans. The amazing part about it, again, is that when we put out the advertisement for the loans, we had over 5,000 applicants. So that pushed us to the second level of the challenge. We don't have enough money to take care of all the students and the people who need this. And so we looked at how do we raise more funds so that we have a bigger kitty that will cater for everybody else who is interested. So we went to the private sector. And we have talked to banks, we have talked to foundations, and they're starting to put in money. And the Higher Education Loans Board, which is a government-funded institution, has actually also decided to put in money. Because quickly, it's translating to what people really want to see. In just uh, two years, we have 423 graduates from those programs. And we can already see in another two to three years that 3,500 young people will be ready to join the workforce. And that makes a big, big difference. So I want to share with you a, a short video of one of our beneficiaries of the scholarships. And just to add that some of these students are really from needy areas in the country. And the difference they make is that they are very passionate to go back to their communities and serve their people because they have already identified the need for that. So as you can see, we have various contributors as we are speaking, and we are looking at more innovative ways of bringing more and more private sector into this process. We'll be looking at things like tax incentives, and working with the government to see how we can encourage the Family Group Foundation, the INM Bank and others to put in more money and bring others on board so that we can be able to actually increase the number of health workers within our situation, have more youths busy and employed and providing services in the country. So there goes the video. Tonkana County is popularly referred to as the cradle of money due to the archaeological finds by the Niki family. Turkana is, however, one of Kenya's driest and least developed counties. Disease, poverty, and malnutrition have dominated this county for generations. This is where young Emmanuel Etapu Kalabe grew up. As a young boy, the challenges of poverty were real, and his dreams limited. When I grew up, I learned that I had no father. So I was supposed to stay with my mother, and since my mother was never dressing up to care her for my schooling program, so I had. The satisfaction in his friends is unmistakable as he serves his people. Etapa completed a diploma in community health nursing in January 2015, realizing a long-held dream of becoming a health worker, a dream planted in him at a very trying moment. What really inspired me to dream about being a medical uh, practitioner. It's when I came back from home one to the community, I, I come for a holiday. I put there was a corner out in the community. And we had the school, the whole school being used as, as a camp for treating this corner out. What came to my mind? Two, two, two cases that are uh, the process of death 
is among thousands of healthcare students who have benefited from Intra Health International Scholarship Program, supported by USAID. The program aims at increasing access to training fees for needy students. Turkana County has one of the lowest health workers to population ratio. Yet, potential health workers like Itabu forfeit their places or drop out due to lack of fees. Thank you. So a lot of students like Etabo have actually benefited from this loan program and many more. And I invite interested people who would like to build the fund and put in more and we are able to have more health workers in Kenya, in Africa and other areas to join us in expanding this initiative. Thank you.